that this is a possibility that it may be true. But you can't just say it's a possibility it may be true. You've got to apply it. You've got to accept it. You do it. And then something more sure than faith takes place. Faith now based upon your own knowledge. It's your own experience. You have experienced it now. And something far, far greater than faith comes up. Out of your own experience, you know what Andrew told you is true. He brought you to Jesus. And if Jesus was not on the outside, the whole drama is unfolding on the inside. And I find that my own wonderful human imagination is the Jesus of Scripture that formerly I thought lived 2,000 years ago. And now I have found him. And he's all within me. And I can go to bed and commune with myself. And then I know what it means in that wonderful poor song. Be still and commune with your own heart upon your bed. And you're communing with God. So I will commune, I will appropriate what I want in this world. I appropriate it all in consciousness. Then I discover what well, faith is nothing more than the subjective appropriation of my objective hope. What did I hope for in this world? Well, my subjective appropriation of the objective hope was my prayer. That is empathy. Not sympathy. That's empathy. For if I really want it, if I'm hoping for it, I'll rejoice in what I'm doing. I rejoice in my appropriation. I simply appropriate the state and fall asleep in that communion with self. And that's God. You try it. Before you judge it, try it. And after having tried it, you're going to test it and you're going to prove it. And then you will have found the living Christ. Today, one billion who claim they believe in God, the Christian God, and yet you mention the word God, and they think of something on the outside. You take 15 million Jews, they believe in God. You mention the word Jehovah, or the Lord, Adonai, whatever would conjure in their minds a sense of this supreme being. If they feel it to be something external to themselves, they have a false God. If you take the hundreds of millions of Mohammedans, and you use the word Mohammed, and they think of a being, a prophet who lived centuries ago, something external to themselves, they have a false prophet. If the Buddhists believe that Buddha was something that lived 600 years B.C. and that was something different, they have a false prophet. Any prophet outside of the being within you, any God outside of the being within you, is false. If there be any Christ other than he who was crucified upon me, and who is buried within me, and who rose and continues to rise within humanity, he is a false Christ. And false teachers teach him as coming from without. Any time they're waiting for him to come from without, he is false. Simple. I'll show you. The very last words of the book of Matthew, the very last words, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. How on earth can I return when I am with you always? They expect him to return. How can he return the very final words as he's departing from a visible state into an invisible state? I am. Stop it. Now, with you always, even to the end of the age. And they tell me he's going to return when he never departed. How can he return when he has never left me? I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Well, how can he return? Can't you see it? He dwells in us. He is through us. If he's through us, he cannot possibly return. And were he not in me, I couldn't breathe. 
He is my bread. And so if I, this very moment, drop from this world, and I depart physically, and you don't see me, I still am not away. If I know the being that I am, I am in you. I have awakened from this dream of life. There's no place for me to go but to be within you. And I'm one of those who are watching, those in great eternity, who contemplate on death, this world. And those who contemplate on death say this, what seems to be is, to those to whom it seems to be, and is productive of the most dreadful consequences to those to whom it seems to be, even of torment, despair, and eternal death. But divine mercy steps beyond and redeems men where? In the body of Jesus. There's only one body in the world. And I tell you from my own experience, you and I are one. There's only one body, one spirit, one Lord, one God and Father of all, who is above all, through all, and in all. Accept it, and you will accept the Jesus that I introduce you to tonight. If you want to test him first, he invites you to test him. Don't test the speaker, no, test Jesus. And Jesus is within you. When you say, I am, that's he. That is the Lord Jesus Christ. So when you go to bed tonight, put him to the extreme test. Do you know what you would love for yourself and for your loved ones in this world? Assume that you have it. And that assumption, though at the moment, is denied by your senses, denied by reason, if you persist in it, because you believe in him, it will harden into fact. And no power in the world can stop it. It can't stop it. But I can tell you the interval of time between your assumption and its hardening into fact. But I promise you from experience, it will harden into fact. But do it in love. May I tell you, whenever you are in doubt, do the loving thing, and you've done the right thing. If ever in doubt, ask a very simple question, would I like it done to me? If you can answer in the affirmative, then do it. And you cannot go wrong if you use that as your guide. So where do you live? Where are you staying? Come and see. But let me get my brother first. And let me bring my brother and introduce him to you. And so throughout the story, he's always bringing others to Jesus. And that's the story of Andrew. You can't change that state. That state is forever. You can fall in this state tonight and take a friend, something that you know concerning Jesus Christ, and tell him. You are playing the part of Andrew. If you give him the Bible and interpret scripture to him as you know it now, then you are actually taking to him and you are now Andrew. If you want to be filled with joy, as this lady's letter to me today, that she could be so praiseful for the little that was done to her by her children, that these three children she felt did so much for, that she wants to show her appreciation. She did it then. She is playing the part of Thaddeus. That is Thaddeus. One of the most neglected characters in scripture. For it means praise. It means thanksgiving. And so few people will stop to say thanks. Were there not ten of you? And only one returned to say thank you? There were ten who were instantly cured. And only one came back to say thank you. That's Thaddeus. And so if you actually express joy, express thanksgiving for the slightest little thing done you, 
you are actually exercising that talent that is known in Scripture as Thaddeus. It's personified as a disciple. He is the tenth one. And so neglected because so few people are grateful. First of all, they reflect upon what happened. And then they give all praise to the means employed rather than the actual cause of the phenomena. But here tonight, we are simply presenting Andrew. So I brought you tonight to meet Jesus. And I do not point to any being outside of you. Do not look for him in any place. Do not look for him in any place in the world. I point within you to the Lord Jesus Christ. And he is your own wonderful human imagination. Man is God. And exists in us and we in him. The eternal body of man is the imagination. And that is God himself. Now before we go into the silence, let me once more try to explain this simple, simple technique. You will have to practice it and use your own rhythm. You don't have to be in church to do it. You can be sitting here tonight. You can be at home listening to nice music. You can be simply relaxing with a drink. It doesn't matter what you're doing and where you are. But we want to do it. Get into a lovely, quiet, relaxed frame. No so-called holy attitude. Forget that. You're holy when you're in love. God is love. So you would love it for someone else. That is all that you need. That mood. Wouldn't it be wonderful if she actually had it? If he had it? If they had it? Also, you know exactly what you want now. And then you imagine you are seeing them. You can see them in your mind's eye and see them vividly. And then breathe yourself into a rhythm. They're telling you that they have it. And you're getting yourself worked up emotionally because they're telling you that they have exactly what you know they would want in this world. And then you reach a certain point and you explode. Something actually goes out of you. It's power. And you'll read the words, Who touched me? For I perceive virtue has gone out of me. At that moment, she was healed. Who touched me? And they say, What? With the crowd? How could you tell who touched you with this enormous crowd? You know. You did it yourself. You work yourself up into a certain emotional state and then suddenly you explode and you feel everything go out and you cannot repeat it. There's no desire to repeat it. It was an actual psychic, sexual act. But there's no physical act. There is no evidence of any physical act. But it's the same thrill that you would were it a physical act. Work yourself right up into that state and then let it go. And do not raise one finger to make it so, any more than you would after impregnation. What can you do after pregnancy is taking place? Nothing. Leave it alone and let it take place in its own good time. Now let us go into the silence. 